how are you? This is Dr. Leslie Rogers with Mental Health Talk. Tonight's episode, I'm going to do something special. I'd like to recognize a nonprofit organization. And tonight we have with us uh, the president and founder, Michael Morgan. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Dr. Rogers? I'm doing good. Good. Doing good. good. Doing good. Thank Glad you. To be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so I'll tell a little bit about you um, really quickly. So um, Michael Morgan is the founder of uh, A Few Good Mentors, a nonprofit organization for youth and men and males. Um, since uh, 2019, Michael Morgan has been leading his nonprofit organization, again, called A Few, a Few Good Mentors, um, as he saw a need for experienced men to mentor to younger men in Northern Virginia. Uh, he and his wife, Tamika, lives in uh, Gainesville, Virginia, and they're active members of their community and church. Um, and they recently opened a second chapter uh, for a few good mentors. Is it a second or third chapter? It's the second chapter. We have one in Northern Virginia and then Hampton Roads. Okay, awesome, awesome. So thank you again for coming. Uh, you know, I, do you want to recognize uh, you for giving back to the community and especially our kids and our males, right? Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, can you, so can you tell us a little bit about A Few Good Mentors? So A Few Good Mentors, first of all, thank you again. You know, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time doing this. But, um, but A Few Good Mentors is basically um, we are here to, to mentor to young men. We have experienced mentors who have a vast life experience, and we think and we believe that all men should reach back and help younger men, especially um, the youth, in helping them develop today. And so that's our goal. We, we're here one on one to to meet the uh, the young men in our community, um, and hopefully throughout the country eventually. So uh, we're just trying to, you know. Uh, alleviate some of the issues that's going on with uh, youth today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where are you located? So we're located um, in Northern Virginia. We have a chapter in Gainesville, Virginia. And like you just stated, we have another one in Hampton Roads. But we were founded right in uh, Prince William County, Virginia. Mm -hmm. We have mentors in um, Fairfax. We actually have one in Maryland, but we, we're still trying to get into Maryland and DC. So if you know anybody out there who, who's interested, we're definitely looking for mentors and mentees in those areas. Absolutely. And at the end, I'm going to give you a chance to shout out and um, get you know people to come on board and read about you. So you'll give out your information. Yeah. Um, in your bio, you mentioned that your father was a huge support system for you. And what, was that an influence to open up this nonprofit or? Yeah, absolutely. You know, my both of my parents were fantastic. I mean, we I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, growing up, um, you know, there was always a lot of things going on, just like there are today. And you really need someone to to model good behavior after, and that was my father, my mother too, uh, and my next door neighbor Chucky. He was like. A, a big brother to me and my brother as well. So, but my father definitely, and in fact, we kicked off our organization on October 1st, 2019, which is also his birthday. And to honor him, mm -hmm. we, um, we started the organization on that date. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I hear you talk about this organization, it sounds similar to um, big brothers and yeah. big sisters. What is it similar? Very similar. And, and when I started uh, A Few Good Mentors, I actually had been volunteering with um, Big Brother, Big Sister for about three to four years. And so, but it was always a need for male mentors. It was always a need for that. And, and the uh, lady that was managing the chapter in the DC area, uh, she would try to give me like two or three young uh, youth to mentor to. and. You know, from talking to her, I came up with a plan of how we can mentor to young men, because that was the biggest uh, gap right there was like male mentors mentoring to other young men. And so that's kind of how I got started. And so we we are very, very similar to 
uh, big brother, big sister. There are some distinct differences as well, but we we are very similar to big brother, big sister. Yeah. What differentiates you, your organization from big brothers? Yeah, and so the main thing that differentiates us is our faith. And we are uh, Christian men. You do not have to be a Christian to join our organization, but we believe that's a, a core value of ours is to have that. And so our faith and the fact that we we are really um, adamant to have good security in our organization. So we do background checks on our mentors, uh, four hours of training, and we do background checks every year. Mm -hmm. And I have a system set up that uh, I can tell if something has happened to a mentor who's been arrested or something like that throughout the year. So we really do a great job of uh, maintaining good security. I think that's important if you're yeah. doing something like that. Mm -hmm. And what's the age range? So the age range is ages eight to 21. Okay. However, if you're older than 21 and you need some guidance, I mean, some of our mentors have business experience, uh, prior military experience. And so they can help with resume writing, uh, interview skills. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to just stop at 21. If, if, yeah. if we're needed, we'll go higher than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you, do you go into the community to, to uh, Canvas? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, for us, it's been word of mouth through our church, through uh, mm -hmm. being connected with the school systems in Prince William County yeah. and Fairfax County. We just <laughs> recently had a shoe drive that yeah. the Hampton Roads area really just blew mm -hmm. it out the water. So that was a good way for us to get into yeah. the community and get involved. And so it really helped us get our name out down there. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a great um, thing to do, especially for our young males, uh, teaching them how to be independent and sufficient and professional and things of that sort, because you only work with males, right? We only work with males. And, and we also think about doing practical things like changing, learning how to change a flat tire or change an oil in a car or little life skills that maybe you know, your big brother or your father would have taught you, but you don't have a male around to teach you these things. And so we also do that, how to tie a tie, how to tie a bow tie or, or things like that. Those are little life skills that, that we think we can pass on to another generation. Yeah, this is a great resource. Um, what do you see as demographics? So our demographics, we uh, primarily, uh, we, we are African-American women who are single, ages 38 to a, about 44. And so, um, I'm sorry, 28 to 44. And so, um, you know, that's primarily our demographic. Uh, you know, usually there's not a male presence in the household. And so uh, we're here to kind of fit that, that gap, but we are not primarily just African-American uh, organization. We have uh, white mentees. We have white mentors. We have Asian uh, mentors. So yeah. we definitely uh, feel like if somebody wants a mentor, we're going to try our best to, to match them up with yeah. one. So it's pretty diverse. It is. Yes, definitely. Definitely. That's important. We think it's very important. Yeah. Mm hmm yeah, absolutely. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I mentioned a little bit that, and we've known each other for a long time. And so, um, you know, growing up in Cleveland, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate and blessed that I had my father in my life. I have my big brother. And, you know, I had a lot of people that kept me out of trouble, coaches and sports sports sporting events and things like that and so um i don't have a story where i didn't have that mm -hmm. what i have is that i know what helped me that helped me um stay out of trouble and you know not get arrested and things like that I, and you know i'm human i've gotten in my share of trouble throughout the years but um but having that support system has been very important and uh, you know, like I said earlier, my father, 
yeah. staying on me and keeping me out of trouble was was really big for me. And so I want to pass that on to the next generation. Like, yeah. I think it's important for us as men to to do that. And so, um, you know, I was like I said, I was very, very, very fortunate because even in spite of all of that, I still got into some trouble. But, yeah. you know, having that support system made sure yeah. I didn't, uh, you know, really fall behind in that in that way. Yeah, and I it is support systems are excellent resources. Um, either uh, family support systems or community based support systems mm -hmm. can go a long way, right. can help an awful lot. And um, you know, offering you know for those that don't have support systems, offering a community resource that can give you that support system to help you bounce back and be resilient during times of uh, adversity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you when you talk about uh, and you know just talk about mental health really quickly. How do you define mental health? Yeah, that's that's a good one because because my thought process has evolved over the years because when I first when you first hear mental health you think bipolar disease or schizophrenia and something really serious like that. That's kind of everybody's impression. And especially you think you don't as, as a man you definitely don't think I need to talk to someone, you know? And so, uh, but over the years, what I realized is like to focus on the health part, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, we exercise, we watch our diet. Yeah. Why aren't we watching our, our mental health? You know what I mean? And so yeah. I think it's just another form of your all around healthiness of your body, you know? And so mm -hmm. um, I think the more you can have the right, people in place, people like yourself who have this great program and you're, you're, you know, you're opening people up to like get rid of the stigma of, yeah. you know, like mental illness and things like that, uh, I think is important. And, you know, not enough politicians talk about mental health either, you know? Right. And so when they're running for office, they very rarely talk about mental illness, right? It's that and fear so, factor. Exactly. Yeah, and afraid so, to talk about it, yeah. And yeah. as men, you know, we definitely don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And we don't, um, especially young ones. And, you mm -hmm. know, right now with everything going on in our country from um, police brutality to yeah. uh, to uh, just COVID and people are losing their job, I think more people mm -hmm. need to definitely seek some help in that area. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm actually glad you brought that up because mental health can be holistically defined yeah. defined as not only when you think of mental health, you know, a person do think of like depression, bipolar, right. anxiety, right. Yeah. But not thinking about everything else that's inclusive in that, you know, right. um, maintaining positive mental health, you know, working right. out, like you said, working out can impact your mood. Right. Um, eating healthy can impact your mood. Having a um, healthy lifestyle can impact mood and things of that sort. So being able to destigmatize that negative connotation about mental health, because that's what it is, is a negative connotation yeah, yeah, about yeah, mental yeah. health. Yeah, yeah. And that's why, you know, one of our core values is health, mm -hmm. you know, and each year we do a virtual 5K walk or run because, I mean, we just don't want to stick to the month of October to get yeah. out there and walk or run. But mm -hmm. we think it's important to take care of yourself as a man as a woman as well but definitely for our organization we focus on health is one of our core values okay good mm -hmm. yeah um were there any challenges that you faced when you were um uh getting this organization together yeah you know the biggest challenge was having the confidence to to step out of your comfort zone you know the you hear a lot of people tell you you're not you're not really you don't have the qualifications or you don't have this and you don't have that so the biggest thing for me was just go go for it because i wrote down a business plan for this back in maybe 2016 yeah mm -hmm. or 2015 something like that and i didn't and i just put it away and it wasn't until my mother-in-law she saw a um program by Dr. Tony Evans called uh, Kingdom Man, Kingdom Man. And so she told me about that. I went to go see the movie and that really inspired me to dust off my notebook and, yeah. and I revised the plan, brought it to 
my wife and then uh, vice president of the organization, Greg Holmes and, and the treasurer, James Smith, after my wife and my um, mother-in-law dissected it and told me what, what I should do. And so that was the start of it. But the, the main thing is to trust yourself and just, yeah. just go for it. And the nonprofit part is you're going to make some mistakes here or there. That's okay. You know, just keep going. Don't wait. You have a passion to help people. Don't, don't stop. Just keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is so awesome that you brought that up because it isn't, doesn't it seem like it's often us who are yeah. in our own ways? Absolutely. All the time, all the time. And so you got to get past that. You know what I mean? And so you have to, you know, find a way, trust yourself. I have over 35 years mm -hmm. of federal government experience of training, of managing budgets, managing people, developing teams. I, I have it, you know, and so I just have to believe in yeah. myself to go get it. And so yeah. it's many people like that. You have to believe in yourself. And it's the, um, the anxiety about starting something new. Right. Um, and especially as you get older, as you become yeah. older, um, that anxiety about starting over or branching out and starting something new. Yeah. You know, I've been in law enforcement for 26 years and, mm -hmm. you know, to jump out and uh, uh, meet your goals or try to right. accomplish your goals is pretty scary. Uh, yeah. Failure. Failure. <laughs> failure. <laughs> failure is scary. Yeah. Failure, failure. will keep you from right. moving forward, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, and so what happens is, you know, uh, something goes wrong or not go as you please initially. Yeah. And then you think that, okay, this is it. I can't go, right. for it. but you have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing because it will prevail. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You know, and look, we, we started October, 2019. Right. And so a few months later, COVID hit. And so we had to re, focus mm -hmm. our plan and and you know adapt to a different environment something that right. we there's no way you could foresee that in our in yeah. the initial plan and so we we actually expanded more during covid yeah. and so yeah mm -hmm. let me ask you has there ever been a time that you felt like giving up or oh yeah i think every um business owner and if you're a nonprofit um business owner you're still a business owner and so you always feel like uh at times like hey i'm not sure if this is going to work i'm not sure if if we can do this if we can raise enough money if we have the right mentors if we have the right board members even and so a lot of these things um definitely make you feel like i i can't do it but when yeah. you get a letter from a mom that uh, talks about what one of the mentors has done, that really inspires you and fires you up to, to like, hey, let's go. We can, you know, we have a mission. You know, our goal is to, um, to make a change in someone's life. We, we said we could make a change in just one yeah. young man's life. We've done our job and, and I believe we've already done that. So, yeah. we, you know, we're, we're doing well. And maybe that one man or one person can push it forward. Absolutely. And in someone else's life. Yeah. Because it, it'll change the entire generation. If, if exactly. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We're, we're very active in our community. And, you know, um, we've done shoe drives, like I said, and fed the homeless in December. And, you know, I think that's important. And so you can see yeah. these young people kind of getting out of their comfort zone and wanting to help people. So that's that's a big thing. It's that positive exposure. You guys are exposing, yeah. exposing them. Right. Yeah. In a way that they probably would not have gotten the exposure possibly without exactly. you all being a positive yeah. picture in their lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that's our goal, really. Yeah. If you think about, um, you know, what a man is, that, that part of it is, you know, uh, making a sacrifice for other people, you know, and so um that's what we do we believe like hey we can feed the homeless we yeah. can do that we can help senior citizens we can do these things and yeah you know, and that's part of growing up 
And it makes you humble too, being yeah. able to see, you know, when you talk about feeding the homeless and uh, doing community right. outreach, it makes yeah. you humble. Yeah. As well. and, and you feel good afterwards, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and so you want to keep doing that, you know, so we're, we want to plant that seed of, you know, um, yeah. of giving back, right? And so that, I think that's really important. Okay. Awesome. So you have two chapters, uh, Hampton Roads and yes. uh, Northern Virginia. Those are two separate chapters, right? Those are two separate chapters. Um, our Hampton Roads chapter is led by Marty Smith. So if anybody is down in that area, um, uh, Marty is their point of contact down there. He's done a great job mm -hmm. um, of getting the rest of the guys um, up to speed. They've all been trained and and we're, we're just now starting to really, as of May 1st, we just started the Hampton mm -hmm. Roads uh, chapter. So we've already got a couple of applications in for mentees. And so we're, we're really excited about that. They are doing an excellent job of getting out there into the community and helping out. I think it's gonna do very, very well down in that area. Awesome, awesome. Now, you know, I do take questions from viewers and I have a viewer question. One question was, um, how do you initiate discussion around uh, police brutality and safety with these young men? Yeah, yeah. which is really important, you know? Um, and it's something that, uh, you know, as an African-American man, those are discussions you have to have with your son. And if a male isn't around, then they may not get that discussion about police brutality, how to handle the police and things like that. So what we did with at a few good mentors right after the Floyd case, we set up a, a picnic and we invited a Virginia State Police Officer and all the moms and the young people together just to have a group discussion about what's going on, police brutality, and also, you know, how do you interact with the police? You know, and and what's their mindset when they are pulling you over. And, and that's, that's important for young people because we have a couple of young men who just got their driver's license. So they need to know how to interact with that. And to also, you know, we're talking about mental health, to talk about what's going on today, you know, and how does that make you feel? And, you know, it was a, a lot of people were angry in the beginning. Yeah. And so as we discussed this with the police officer, we realized that they're they're afraid as well when they're pulling people over and so um you know but it was a good discussion it's something that we're going to keep doing uh we're going to keep having these discussions with the police and uh just so that we can kind of bridge that gap a little bit yeah mm -hmm. and, and also just get it get it out and open you know like yeah. just have a discussion about it yeah yeah. That's excellent. Excellent, Michael, because, um, you know, involving the police as well helps to normalize experiences, normalize yeah. experiences for our children, normalize yeah. experiences for communities, right. normalize yeah. experiences for everyone. We all are kind of feeling um, in labeling emotions, anger, sadness, disappointment, and other emotions that we often feel when things like this happen, right? And being able to talk about it so that you can kind of decrease some of those anxieties um, right. and not being judged. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're talking yeah. about how yeah. we feel or how we all feel about, you know, yeah. Yeah. these true. experiences, right? That's true. That's true. And yeah. So we, we definitely this year plan to do that again. Mm -hmm. uh, I know with COVID, we yeah. kind of had to stop a lot of, uh, you know, group meetings and things like that, but we're going to get back into uh, you know, some group bigger discussions on, especially with law enforcement. I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. How do you um, advertise for a few good mentors? It literally has been just word of mouth, which in some cases at our stage of our organization, it's very important for us to get good referrals, good um, uh, community this is grassroots yeah. community mentoring. And so uh, it's very important for us, not just to advertise, but to 
have people kind of speak for us and to and to say, you know what, these these gentlemen are really doing a great job of mentoring to my son. And so we really take that into effect. And that's our main way that we 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 mentor or get the word out is through okay. events and through the school system are the two biggest ones. Awesome. Are you taking donations? We are, we are, we, we definitely are. So if you, if you go to um, really even our Facebook page, you'll see a link for um, donations through our website. Our website is um, www.afgmentoring.net, um, uh, afgmentoring.net. And if we could probably post it up somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to post it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, if you go to the website or, um, you know, or Facebook, there's, you'll see something there where you can, where you can donate. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And um, I'm definitely going to post, you know, if you have anything about donations where people can contribute, donate, if they can donate uh, clothing or if anything yeah. like that is needed or um, donate funds, what have you just, I'll post that. You just let me know. Yeah, um, I'll yeah, post cool. your website and everything as well. Yeah. Um, any final comments? Well, the only thing I have really is, you know, we always need help. We, we really, just like you stated, like we're trying to get the word out. Um, tell everyone, um, we're very fortunate. Right now I have more mentors than I do mentees. No yeah. organization has that. So, um, but we're, we're not always going to be in that position, but we have to keep those numbers of mentors up. So definitely reach out to me. Um, you can call me at 571-989-2599. And that's a main number where you can, can, can reach me at if you're interested in um, getting your son in our organization. I would say don't wait. You know, you, you really cannot afford to continue to wait. If if you believe this could help your son, if you believe that we all need a mentor, mm-hmm. I can tell you that now, it doesn't matter who you are, you definitely need one. And so we have some of the, the best around. I mean, these guys, that I'm inspired by them because they they do an excellent job and they are really all in and they're really focused on doing it. But, Definitely contact us uh, through our website. We'll post that, my email, telephone call, or if you you can't do it, you know, just donating to our organization is huge because it allows us to uh, to market and and reach more people. It allows us to to conduct these events in our community and eventually expand a few good minute mentors to other locations. So I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about just hearing about it. Again, guys, you know, get the word out there. A few good mentors. This is uh, uh, Michael Morgan uh, here talking about the organization for young youth ages. What were the ages again? Ages 8 to 21. Ages 8 to 21 um, for your sons. And, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, um, single parents may, but it doesn't have to be single parents that need this service. It could be uh, couples that are working. Right. That, need, that need the service. So, um, you know, it, it, there's not really any um, uh, limitations to what this service can offer. So again, you know, tell your friends, tell your families, whoever need this service. Um, I will be posting the information online so that you guys can have this um, once the video is posted as well. Um, again, this is Dr. Leslie Rogers, uh, host of Mental Health Talk uh, with goal of a uh, continuing the dialogue and creating awareness around mental health and destigmatizing mental health. Yeah. Getting rid of that negative connotation. That's right. <laughs> we get are, de- <laughs> right, get rid of it. We are here to destigmatize that. Yeah, um, uh, so guys, um, I will see you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. Mike Morgan, I, I thank you as well. Thank you. And thank you. Peace and blessings, everyone. We'll talk soon. Okay, thanks. Thank you.